Richie guys got another video here for you on the worst thing about Windows 11. This is probably one of the biggest problems with Windows 11. And that's not to say uh, that there isn't other things wrong with Windows 11, but it is mainly all of the unnecessary bloat that is inside Windows 11. All of the settings you have to change, you have to go in and make tons of changes because of all the telemetry, all of the unnecessary apps that are bloated into Windows 11, you have to go and uninstall all of those. And you have other big major problems with Windows 11 as well, which is obviously to do with Copilot. And you can see here, it's already bundled in the taskbar here, and it will be in your browser. It's in Notepad, it's in Paint, it's everywhere, and it's getting worse. And they are looking to probably embed it in just about every component of Windows 11. You've also got Recall, which they are now starting to look at ways of using this on a normal operating system, whereas at the moment it's only for Copilot Plus PCs. This is where scripts come in and also batch files and applications and all this other stuff that you have to use to be able to remove a lot of this unless you have Windows 11 Pro where you can go into Group Policy Editor and make changes there and to disable all of this. If you want to physically remove it, then you have to use uh, other methods like scripts and things like that to physically remove those components from Windows. And we're talking about things like Edge and other applications that people don't want, like Copilot. And this is where scripts come in like this, which is another new introduction. And this is why we're seeing a large insurgence of applications and scripts like these, which are debloating Windows. And of course, these can be obviously dangerous to the operating system because you have no clue of what's inside of these. And some of these are unsafe and some of them are OK to use. So what ones do you use? And this is the problem. People ask that question all the time. Do you trust using applications like these, which are unknown publishers? People just really don't know what to do. And of course, if Microsoft were to you know, offer an option where you could have a clean install version of Windows, this will probably make things a lot easier. So for instance, Microsoft could offer versions like a full-blown version like this one, which is a full installation with all the bloat in it. And they can also offer light versions. Now, I do know they offer versions like LTSC and things like that, but these can be very difficult to officially get hold of uh, for home users. So offer this to people where they don't want Copilot and they don't want Edge and they don't want all this stuff. Give them the options to remove all that stuff. And I think the problem will go away. So you can see programs like this are now going to remove all the bloat applications in one go, and it's going to uninstall them. There's also other features in this app or script that can actually disable all of the other stuff that you see on the left hand side. It's going to remove all the unwanted apps and it's going to start to disable things like all of the pushed ads that you have from Microsoft. So let's go ahead and quickly take a look at this. People always ask which ones are the best. I personally don't use these on my own computer. I will use a mixture of a batch file or I would use group policy editor myself. And then once I've got the settings done, I will back them up. And this is because it's an official application from Microsoft where these are third party uh, people that have created these. And of course, some of these can be a bit dodgy to use because you don't know what it's doing to the computer on the back end. So here we can see this feature will disable tips and ads on the lock screen and you can activate all of these or deactivate them. And you can see they're not actually uh, turned on right now because obviously this is a fresh install of Windows, which means you're going to have to go through and turn all of this stuff off. This is all the forced ads that Microsoft are forcing on people. And there's quite a lot of them due to the fact that they're trying to make money out of you when you're using your computer. So you can see disable settings ads, start menu ads, also tailored experiences, general tips and ads, loads and loads of areas that need to be turned off, which take time. And people with slightly older or lower end systems have found Windows 
11 to be a bit of a resource hog and by disabling a lot of this stuff can claim back a lot of resources for that system and make it a little bit more usable because all of this stuff running in the background obviously takes resources and if you haven't got a pretty high end system then Windows 11 can uh, sort of slow down the system a little bit compared to previous operating systems that Microsoft have released. So you can see here, I'm going to quickly restart the system. I have run this uh, script or this app on the system, and you'll see that it hasn't done the best job possible that some other scripts or apps have done. Now, this is probably work in progress from the creator of this script or app, and you can see Copilot is still on here, and we still have other stuff on here like Xbox and Edge and also Outlook and things like that. It's ignored a lot of this stuff when it should be removing it. So it still needs a bit of work, this application. So is this one that I would recommend people use? Probably not, because there's other ones out there which are better than this actual script. But I wanted to show you uh, this new script that is uh, just hit them sort of internet really. And you can see there's a lot of settings that still are enabled. This is another script which is pretty good and uh, another one that you can use to turn a lot of stuff off. And this is more of a script based where it doesn't have a front end GUI and it basically just runs in Windows Terminal or PowerShell. And you can then run this and what it will do is it will give you questions and options and remove it. It does have a quick default setting which will turn all this stuff off for you. But it's much better to go through using the uh, questions and answers. That way you can turn off the stuff you want and leave the stuff alone that you want to leave on the system. So you can see here, number one is default mode, apply the default settings. Number two is custom mode, modify the script to your needs. And you've got free app removal mode, which select and remove apps without making other changes. You can choose whatever one you want to use so let's go ahead and we'll choose number two and push enter and now we're getting some options it says n uh, don't remove any apps number one only remove the default selected of bloatware apps from the app list.txt or we can do number two remove default selected of bloatware apps as well as mail calendar apps and developer apps and stuff like that I'm going to go for option number three here. And again, this will give us a list of stuff that we can use. So you can go through and select what you want and uncheck what you want to keep. That's entirely up to you. And then you confirm that uh, selection and it will go off and remove these from the system. There is another option on here, which basically says only show installed apps. And you can select that option and it's going to allow you to select the only installed apps on this system. So let's go ahead and I'll quickly show you that rather than going through and selecting all of this stuff right here. This will remove Copilot and Recall and all of the other nasty stuff. But let's go ahead and click on Only Show Installed Apps here. And this will now load up the apps that are installed on the system. And what you can do here, you can see we can now check mark all of these or just go ahead and do one at a time. So this will remove Copilot, Edge, and all the other stuff on your system. I'm going to quickly uncheck mark, say, Windows Terminal and also uh, Edge here because I want to keep that on the system because I haven't installed a browser on here yet. And if you go ahead and remove it, it's going to leave you with no browser. So make sure you download and install browsers before you remove browsers. So let's go ahead and select Yes here. So you've selected 21 apps for removal, disable Xbox screen recording, also stops gameplay overlay uh, pop-ups. I'm going to say yes for this. Disable telemetry, diagnostic data and all that stuff. I'm going to say yes for that. I'm going to disable tips, tricks and suggestions and ads and all that stuff. Say yes there. And we're going to disable Bing web search and all the AI, Cortana and stuff. And we're also going to disable Copilot and also Windows Recall Snapshots. We're going to disable all that. We're going to restore the old Windows 10 style context menu, turn off the enhanced pointer position, and also do you want to disable any of the context menu options? I'm going to say yes. And we're going to do all these options right here on the screen. And then we're going to go ahead and make our changes. And to the start menu, I'm going to say yes here. 
And now you can choose which options you want. So you can say remove all pin apps from the start menu for all existing users and new users. I'm going to say that one right there. And we're going to disable the hide and recommended sections in the start menu. And you just follow the on-screen display and you read the messages and you will say what options you want. And once you've selected all of your options, this is making changes to the taskbar here. You can choose whatever option suits your needs. And then you can just push enter and the script will run and make the changes of all the selections that you've made on this script. Very simple and easy to do. No GUI interface here. So if it's a bit daunting to do all this inside PowerShell, then probably this option is not one for you. So let me quickly speed this process up here and you can then go ahead and push enter to confirm your choices. And it's then going to go ahead and start uh, applying these choices that you've made, like removing all the apps. And of course, it's going to start to uninstall all of the stuff you wanted to uninstall. And you can see here, it's attempting to do all that right here. And you're going to see the screen flash a few times. And that is it. We're pretty much done. Press any key to exit. Always best to restart the PC at this stage. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and restart. And you can already see that this is now cleaned the system up really nicely. Let me quickly uh, go ahead and take a look here. Very clean, uh, as you can see, start menu here. In your app section, this is what's left inside here. Very clean looking app section. If you want to add these settings to the taskbar, you can do. And once you start clicking on stuff, it's going to end up in the pin section here anyway but what let's go ahead and quickly move this to the uh, taskbar here so we can access it quickly there we go and all your privacy and security settings have already been changed for you and you'll see here some of these settings are managed by your organization that means they're set group policies for them another one people like to use is shut up 10 plus plus again this is still a very good application easily applied and also easily reversible it creates a restore point as well you can do apply only recommended settings or recommended or somewhat recommended i'm going to go ahead with the yellow one here and 184 settings have been changed you can use this option as well and this one is reversible and you can choose what you want to apply to I would actually argue and say this is probably enough for most people once they've installed Windows is to basically do something like this because it's making changes to the system which you would have to manually do yourself. Once you've made all your changes, you can restart the PC and this will obviously make a bunch of changes for you. Another one which I've showed you is this one here, which is called WinScript. And again, this has an online version and a desktop version. And this does have a GUI interface and you can run through this and makes it a bit more clearer and more understanding on how to uh, do things. So you can use something like this as well. Again, the choices are yours. There's tons of them out there, including programs like Chris Titus Text Tool and a bunch of other ones out there which are in production right now. There is heaps of them out there on the market. Basically, choose your poison and run it on your system. I know people are going to ask what I do myself. I personally would do a clean install. And what I would do is generally uh, use either a batch file that I've created, or I would go ahead and use group policies. When I always have a backup of uh, my policies and I will just import those into the system and it's done. Pretty much that's it. I don't go and run scripts off the internet on my system. So why am I showing them? That's because people want to use them. And this is why I make videos like this to show people. But I'm always clear to people and explain to people what these can actually do to the system. Sometimes they remove items which you can't reinstall. And that means you will have to reinstall Windows. Yes, they can break things. And yes, they can block Windows updates and people can't reverse it. And it can cause a lot of problems. So be careful on what scripts you are using and understand what you're doing on your system before you start to run anything and understand the risks. So basically, I install uh, Windows 11, set my group policies and also set the uh, Windows updates to manual and don't update feature updates. I will just get security updates coming down and installing. But generally, I will do it manually myself and I always wait for a few weeks before I install any updates just to make sure there's no bugs. 
and that way I have trouble-free computing. I'm on Windows 11 Pro 23H2 right now. I don't have any plans of upgrading to 24H2 just yet because of the amount of hassle that that actual version has caused a lot of people. So I just don't use it as of right now. I'm not at any risk because obviously Windows 11 23H2 has plenty of support left on it and it's still receiving all of the same updates that 24H2 is receiving. So hopefully this answers all your questions because I get a lot of questions on this topic and basically I try to keep it as simple as possible for myself because that way I'm not going to end up uh, causing myself any issues by breaking things on the system. And that way group policies can be undone and reversed quite easily and it's quite easy to set up. If you've watched some of my videos, I've made full in-depth videos on how to do that without having to install any sort of uh, programs on your PC. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I appreciate the support. And also, I shall catch you on the Discord server for a chat. The link is in the video description. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.